it is nearly impossible to imagine a world where trade with other people wasn't allowed. Instead of going to the grocery store or market to buy food, you would have to go and make it all yourself. For shelter, you would have to build your own house. If it is getting cold outside, hopefully you own some sheep for wool and know how to knit it into a warm jumper. Without trade, you wouldn't even be able to trade your labor for income and have a job. This scenario illustrates the absurdity of trying to be self-sufficient. There are simply too many tasks to do, too many materials you would need and too many skills you would have to learn and simply not enough time to do them all. In this situation, we would all become very poor very quickly. However, thankfully, no one needs to live this way. Instead, thanks to trade and exchange, individuals can specialize in a skill and have a job that benefits themselves and everyone else. Farmers and ranchers work to make sure that our grocery stores and markets are full of food. Builders work to ensure we have roofs over our heads and seamstresses work to ensure that we can all have clothes on our back. In short, when more people can trade the goods they produce, more specialization occurs and we as consumers enjoy access to more goods at lower prices. The benefits of exchange applies not only for individual people but also for nations. Like people, no nation can become rich in isolation. While some people believe that a nation should strive to be self-sufficient, in reality, no country is able to produce all the goods and services we need on a daily basis. Take a smartphone as just one example. The camera is likely from Japan, the accelerometer is from Germany, the battery is from China, it uses tech from the US and inside it has more than 75 different elements that were mined in dozens of countries across the world. No single country could make one smartphone. Instead, countries can rely on trade. A single country does not need to make cars, clothes, desks and a million other products. Instead, they can specialize, find a comparative advantage and then trade with other nations who make the other products that they need. We have already seen the benefits of free trade across the world. Over the past few decades, billions of people have been lifted out of extreme poverty and seen a real improvement in their lives thanks to the abolition of many barriers to trade. Free exchange creates wealth as it leaves both parties better off. As such, any barriers which reduce the amount of exchange that can take place also reduces the amount of wealth that an economy can create. However, unfortunately for Africa, according to almost any study that ranks economic freedom and the ease of trading goods across borders, African states usually score very low. The prevalence of high tariff quotas, corruptions at the borders, costly and complicated export licenses and a slew of other barriers means that on average, it is harder to trade across Africa than it is in other regions in the world. These barriers drastically reduce the amount of wealth that the continent could create. The good news is that thanks to a new free trade agreement named the African Continental Free Trade Area, the continent might be able to finally live up to its economic potential. The ASCFTA, as it is commonly called, aims to remove tariffs on 97% of goods traded between African states. The World Bank estimates that its implementation can lift more than 30 million Africans out of extreme poverty by 2035. To find out more about this new free trade area, what it means for the continent and how economic liberalization could change the fortunes of tens if not hundreds of millions of Africans in the near future, subscribe to the IATP YouTube channel and keep up with our work at www.theiatp.org.